Fred Film Radio. I'm Matt Micucci from the 2019 BFI London Film Festival, and I am very pleased to be joined by director Maura Del Pero. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you to you. <laughs> and I must say that the film that we're going to talking, uh, be talking about, that uh, you are presenting in this festival, and it's called Maternal, has possibly been my favorite film of the festival so far, so I'm really, really happy to be talking with you about it. But just for the listeners who are not familiar with it, and in the best interest of me not spoiling anything or you know, saying something that I shouldn't say, would you mind maybe just giving us a brief introduction of the film? Uh, do you mean about... The story, yeah. Just a little bit about the story so that the listeners know, who are not familiar with it, can kind of get an understanding of what we're about to talk. It's more than the story, because it's not a plot-oriented film. It's more like a character-oriented and like a mood-oriented film. And it's all set in a Ogar. Ogar is a center for teenage mother. Um, it's placed in Buenos Aires, and but it's held by Italian nuns. That's why the film, in a way, it's Italo, Italo Argentinian. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's it's a true. I mean, it, the 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 thing. It's documentary. The inspiration is documentary because um, a group of Italian nuns founded this hogar in the middle of the last century in Buenos Aires, mm -hmm. and now it's half and half Italian Argentinian, and and it's about it's. It's all set in. It's you have like a unity of space and time. You just stay in the hogar, and my idea was to see about how the relationships between these different women, mm -hmm. um, because you, you you know in a way you have this um, absent maternity of the nuns and this uh, such a precocious maternity of the the girls, mm -hmm. uh, such very different women living together. Um, and the idea was um, in their relationships, they kind of change by, by encountering, um, they, they kind of change their lives and overall they change their relationship to maternity. Well, first of all, uh, I wasn't familiar with the Hogar. I'm not sure many people are. How did you find out about these places? I, I wanted to do a film about teenager motherhood, so I, 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 I informed, I was researching. And I found out this Ogar existed, and I decided to work inside. Mm. So I, I oh, worked, you worked in the Ogar. Yes, I wow. worked in three one in three Ogars. Um, there are religions, religious one and not religious one. I was much more inspired by the religious ones because yeah. of these cohabitations. Um, I st I tr I worked like four years long. <laughs> right. You got first-hand experience. I mean, you feel like mm. that was very important mm. for you to. Is that like a way that uh, that you? You would say that you like working, yes. just getting first-hand experience. Yes, I really uh, need to know everything about something mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm telling. Yeah. It's a very, in a, in a way, it's a very personal film because the script really has a lot of um, personal things, also indirect and, you know, like, but it has to do with me as a teenager and me as a woman. And mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. But then, of course, mm -hmm. I, I really wanted to know the places very good, so I wanted to stay in these hogares and to observe, to listen, to smell, to touch, you know, like really yeah. to, to absorb the, the, the mood. Yes, uh, right. And you mentioned that it came from a very personal place. Obviously, you know, uh, given that the film is called Maternal and it does examine maternity. I mean, it's that's the way I perceived it. It was definitely someone who feels that in their life. I mean, that as well, taking the personal and just representing it in, in a film, uh, you know, was very important to you as well. Can you just tell me a little bit more about how this film reflects your thoughts about maternity. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, really, it was originated by a personal calling, uh, like a big attraction to ma motherhood. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so a very strong attraction at the same time, also feeling a lot of doubts and troubles and fears. So I, I, I found I, I, I had a com complex relationship to this uh, incredible event, natural mm -hmm. event. And I began to interview mothers, and I felt that it was not just personal, it was universal. Right. <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of women that are feeling very contradictory feelings, but in a way they cannot um, confess them, because overall in Latin society you kind of have 
always to be the perfect mother, <laughs> yeah. who's always just happy to be a mother. Uh, so I wanted to go deep into complexity of maternity. Um, and I was uh, just, I, so in a way it was like, at the beginning it was personal and artistical, but it, it ended up to be like in a way ideological and political. Let's talk about this, let's, let's give space and voice to all these contradictory feelings women feel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this conscious between uh, specifically being set in one place, but also the universal topics that it deals with is very fascinating. Do you, um, did you find it challenging to maintain a sort of balance uh, while you were examining this? Uh, no, no, I, I think that was kind of natural because in a way, then when you begin to, to write, in it kind of the synthesis it's kind of natural mm. I would say yeah that's interesting to me because um while I was watching it I I like to not know so much about the film before I watch it mm -hmm. I like to just explore things mm -hmm. and when the film started I wasn't exactly sure that this wasn't a documentary you know as crazy as it may sound but now you're saying the writing comes up a lot and um uh, so the writing process as well, but do you notice that then your film kind of changes while you're actually filming from what you had on paper? Uh, it's interesting because it was like a reality fiction reality mm. in this order. Right. I mean, I really researched, so it really has a documentary inspiration. Mm. Then I closed the door and I began to write and it was just paper, uh, dramaturgy and really completely fiction. I mean, no, no one of the characters is real. Yeah. But what's interesting is that when I did the casting mm -hmm. in order to find the girls, when I, f uh, when I finally found Lou, it was very difficult to find her, the blonde one. Yeah. When, she when she read the script, she asked me, how did you know this? How did you, how did you know all these things about my life? Oh. So it was so funny because in a way, I kind of read on her face that she was kind of archetypical. Yes. So in a way, like this fiction went back to reality again and it's circular. So, and this was also like, I was happy about it because I thought, okay, so this is organic. Yeah. Okay, so you did, you did a good work in a way. I was gonna ask you about that, uh, you know, the, um, how much of the real personalities of the cast actually was reflected in the characters themselves. So that's fascinating. There seems to be a sort of like a connection between them that goes deeper than what we may perceive while we're watching the film. Well, well, I mean, I, I really chose like the characters because also when you, when you choose natural actors and so young actors, in a way you're, you're looking for the person. Mm. And um, this relationship, this um, friendship, it's kind of inspired by, uh, uh, by my friendship with mm. my best friend when I was a teenager. And it was really like this, like more like when you, when you are in, in teenhood, you kind of try, you, you kind of have, your best friend is the opposite because you need its complementarity. You need some, someone that has something different from you and you get, can inspire you so they kind of hate and love each other so I I, w I naturally looked for a fatty that was a shy and more introspective girl and yeah. Lou that was more rebel and they are like this and when they knew the two actresses they they they, they are very f their best friend now. <laughs> in a way they, they they keep on talking a lot and they love each other uh, and so it was easy also to 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 build their relationship because in a way when you when you choose the good ingredients like in kitchen then yeah. they go together well right. <laughs> and it's alchemy you know like that's so. true chemistry very important chemistry. very important yeah. um there's so much i would like to ask you but i guess we're oh we're actually being cut off i'm just gonna say one more <laughs> yeah i was trying to gather my thoughts here because there really is but i guess like one of the things that i wanted to ask you about was that we didn't talk about it was the actual style of the movie i think you mentioned somewhere along the lines that this isn't necessarily a film that you can, you know, you can summarize the plot in a nutshell. There's a lot of atmosphere in it, and it's just appealing to the senses, too. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about that approach that, you know, is more atmospheric, maybe driven in some, in some points, like that scene I told you about in the middle of the film? I think that was, I mean, to me, the plot was kind of an excuse to tell a world. I was more fascinated by the universe than by any complicated plot. It mm. was just 
a way to uh, to make that people sit down and and <laughs> enter a world mm. so in a way to me it's an invitation into a house that is normally close to the world yeah. so it's the the idea that the viewer can live a little time inside this particular house that's great well thank you very much for joining us it's a pleasure talking with you okay thank you very much <laughs> thanks a lot and this is fred film radio the festival insider <laughs>